Why would I want to watch you play a terrible game, you bum? Play Genshin. <laughs> That's a real paragon of virtue. A real great game. Genshin Impact. Bro, I swear to God, one day I will, and I will take that fucking bag. Genshin offers so much fucking money. I'll just sit here and I'll talk about how great it is. Oh my God, this game is so beautiful. It's so fun. And look at look at this cute character. I wonder if I could upgrade her. Like, that would be awesome. They'll pay me fucking 15K. The problem is I might actually get addicted to it. <laughs> or I'll start playing. I'll be like, I'll make a stupid joke about how I need this five-star fucking servant or whatever. And then I'll actually spend fucking 20 grand trying to get it. And then I'll be down in the hole. And then, so it's all, it's a net, it's a net L. And also it really undermines my gotcha game video. If I then follow up with a sponsored video by Genshin Impact. You should do a stake sponsorship less addicting than Genshin. I would unironically do a stake sponsorship before I did a Genshin one, I think realistically. Because I think I could play poker on there and I'd be like, well, that's fine. Poker's a game of skill. The real problem with stake for me is even less than the gambling, it's the crypto. I hate crypto. I hate crypto. I don't, I've never been able to do anything remotely close to crypto. It's just so scummy. What is the most ethically bankrupt sponsor you would take? Realistically? Ethically bankrupt sponsor I would take. I mean, you're saying bankrupt. I don't know. Ethically bankrupt is like, there's not that many companies that are. Raytheon? Yeah, I would take a Raytheon sponsor. I don't think they're ethically bankrupt. <laughs> Nestle? Yeah, you know what? It would probably be like one of those big brands that is so big and established, but has kind of a shady, like, like for example, I mean, realistically, you know, there's some shady stuff with Nike and sweatshops, right? But no one's turning down a Nike. <laughs> no one is turning down a Nike ad. U.S. military, it's possible. I could do a thing with my dad. I wouldn't be too opposed. I lived, I grew, I grew up on military bases. I don't have exactly positive things to say about it, but I, I would be able to. Would you do an AMD ad? No, I wouldn't. I really, I actually, I think it would have to be such an unimaginable bag because I think it's really funny to hate on AMD. <laughs> And unironically, it indoctrinated in my brain after five years at NVIDIA. I really don't like AMD. <laughs> Only for GPUs, by the way. Every time I shit on AMD, I want you to understand that I'm only talking about GPUs. I actually think AMD CP Ryzen CPUs are fine. Equivalent, if not better, than Intel in many situations. But I only think about GPUs, which I think are trash. What was wrong with your PC in the end? Oh, I'll tell you. I didn't really change anything. I just swapped all the plugs out and it hasn't happened again. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do anything. Why doesn't NVIDIA make CPUs expensive, heavy competition, you know, thin profit margin. If you don't have massive scale, which Intel has, I mean, I don't, it would be, it would be tough and different and not there. I mean, all the money right now is towards these GPUs that are usable for AI. So why would they, why would, I mean, I'm not saying they never would do it. I'm just saying. There was a time that NVIDIA was trying to buy um, ARM, which is the UK-based CPU design company that makes most of the cell phone CPUs in the world, but it got blocked by antitrust. They were trying to buy a copy of Nintendo ARMS for the Switch, <laughs> but it got blocked by antitrust. I had you muted for the last 10 minutes and didn't realize it because I'm high. <laughs> you were watching my mouth move and talk and you were like, bro, what, what is happening? You've been there. Multiple people have been there. That's a crazy. I've been high many times. I've never watched a muted stream and thought, when's he going to talk? It's so obvious. My experience being high is that it is nothing like what they do in movies. You just, yeah, you just get sleepy and relaxed and you're a little more giggly. That's that, my experience. I remember we were all at, uh, it was when we did that, when Ludwig got that yacht. It was like for my 30th, you know, there was like, I don't know. 10 mg weed edibles and i had five of them or something i was just so fucking gone i was so fucking gone and i couldn't understand what anyone was saying and i sunk into the couch and i just fucking melted but i didn't i never hallucinated oh actually i do remember what happened wait we were doing um because we were like three days we were staying in like an airbnb for three days and every night uh somebody picked a different funny movie that they thought was really funny from like their childhood or growing up or whatever and i picked bedazzled with brendan fraser i think first night went over pretty well pretty funny no big deal and then the second night was when i did all the fucking edibles and ludwig picked the fucking pink panther 
with Steve Carell. No, Steve Martin. Apparently, nobody laughed. Like, everyone was stone-faced except for me because I was so high. I laughed the whole time. <laughs> I laughed at every joke, even the unfunny jokes. I was laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing. And then I eventually, like halfway through the movie, sunk into the fucking couch and stopped laughing. <laughs> just, and then I'm just like, like just smiled and that was it. So that was it. That was, that was my experience with that. At no point did I hallucinate or get confused about what I was seeing. Then you stole the pillow or some shit. I don't remember that. Would you have noticed if the movie was muted? Yes, of course. Of course, of course, of course, of course. You got to do 100 sometime for real. No, I don't. <laughs> it's like when I did, I think one of the, I mean, this is not the best things that ever happened to me, but it has made me have a good relationship with alcohol for the rest of my life was when I was 21, turned 21 on my birthday, I did 21 shots in Korea and I got so blackout pissed drunk. Everything went wrong. I'm not do the whole story. There's a video about it, but it was miserable. It was awful. And then I threw up everywhere. Uh, I mean, a lot of bad things happened. <laughs> There's a story. Watch the video. The point is, ever since that time, I couldn't even sniff Jack Daniels without feeling sick. Like, to this day, I cannot sniff Jack Daniels without feeling sick. And I've never had, like, the urge to super binge drink. So I'm always pretty lightweight when it comes to drinking, which is, a, I think, a good thing. Um, and it's because of that day. Because before that, even though I was under 21, I would drink at ASU, and I just never had any problem with it. And top so anyway, criminal, crime, criminal, crime. <laughs> 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 fucking narcs. <laughs> you know, in Europe, they're drinking at like fucking 14, bro. The UK frogs in my chat right now are talking about their fucking 12th birthday fucking pint. <laughs> 12 birthdays, 12 pints. <laughs> it's part of our routines. Yeah. <laughs> But, oh, what, uh, <laughs> have you had absinthe? No, bro. I haven't had absinthe. Okay. Unless you think it's cool. And then, yes, I have. It was, it was dope, actually. What I love most about the absinthe was like the, was like the taste. What's the point of drinking if you're not blackout drunk an hour in? This is a person that has a good relationship with alcohol. I can tell that won't be a problem for you later on. Keep that up. <laughs> Not only is that fun, it's sustainable. Sustain most sober Australian. <laughs> <laughs>